everyone, in this video I'm going to be giving you guys some tips and advice on how to write your background information for your IB Science IA. This can probably also apply to mathematics, but specifically I did mathematics SL, I did physics HL, and I did chemistry HL, so that's my background on this thing. This probably also does apply to biology, but I'm not... 100% sure because I didn't do a biology, but I assume they have like the same gist when it comes to background information. The background information is where you want to set the context for your investigation and show what your investigation is going to be based off of. All science investigations, all research questions should be based off prior research. It should be based off some sort of theory that you are using. There are going to be no scientific research questions that are made out of the blue. So it's really important to show that background information so that the reader knows exactly where you are coming from. This is where you you're going to score some key exploration points so if you don't set out the right context for your exploration you're not going to get as high of exploration points background information is one is something that people tend to leave to a side despite it being really important so in this video i'm going to be talking about five tips for writing your background research first tip is to make it clear and concise if your eye is too short this is not the place to be just adding more random information to make it seem more legit because in all honesty this is probably going to just do you worse than it does you good you only want to put in background information that is relevant to your research question if there's anything that you add in the background information that's not directly related to your ia and you just decided to put it in there for a fun fact then I would argue that this is going to impact negatively on your IA because it's going to skew the focus away from what you are talking about to some other random topic that I don't know why you put in there. You also want to make sure that it's concise and by that I mean you don't like spend pages and pages talking about something. You don't spend more sentences than you need to trying to explain something. You really want to make sure that this is as concise as possible because the background information, at least in my opinion, is the most heaviest to read, like it's the most difficult to read and if you can make that as easy and as clear and as simple for the examiner to read as possible that's gonna be really good for your IA. You don't want to have to force him to read through lots of stringy long sentences in order to get at the point that you're talking about. Describing theory and concepts is difficult enough. Don't make it any more difficult than it needs to be. Number two, reference everything and give a name to the theories that you are talking about. When you're explaining collision theory, for example, don't just say, so if you're trying to like explain collision theory, don't just say, oh, if a reaction needs to happen, then it needs to collide, have the right activation energy and the correct orientation. No, don't just say, that because you want to state the name of your theory and you want to reference it in some way or another so if you want to talk about collision theory you'd be like collision theory states that and then you describe collision theory and then you reference it if you don't reference it that's plagiarism and that's bad I also really encourage you to reference as you go because that's gonna affect the way that you write something if you're taking note to reference and like add in some nice quote then that's gonna affect the how you're gonna write your IA and I know referencing can be annoying and stuff but you're not just referencing because you have to don't just reference understand that the importance of referencing is actually because it makes your IA seem more legit. If you got a bunch of references in there from a bunch of different sources, it makes it seem like you did some legit research and that your IA is actually built on theory and it's, and it's not just based off your fun ideas that you had about science one day, you know? It's actually based off real research and evidence and that's good. You need to reference because it shows that the theory that you are basing your IA off of didn't just come out of nowhere. It was actually backed by scientific research. Your IA is not supposed to be the new thesis to a new field of science. It's supposed to be work that's based off of research. Work that you built upon other people's research. It's supposed to be work that you built upon scientific principles that you are using to show your understanding of science and how science works. You want your IA to be based off research, not to just be based off your own opinions about how science works and how things work. And the way to do this is to properly reference your IA and show that you know your shit, you know. Any sources that you use, you can quote them and just add a reference to them. If there was a research article that you did that you got inspired to do your research article based off of, reference that paper in the thing because that shows that you are building on top of someone else's research. That's not an original, that's just the scientific process. Building on top of other people's works. It's a really important thing. <laughs> Number three, use diagrams to aid explanations. Now, if you've seen my aids, you would know that I really like this tip because I love to add diagrams to help explain what I'm talking about. Now, I'm not... 100% sure that this is what got me a 7, but I feel like it may have some part to do with it. Because the thing is, examiners are lazy, and they want to get through your IA as quick as possible. And I'm telling you, based off what my teacher told me, they're gonna much prefer a nicely labeled diagram with some explanation to give it to you in context, rather than a lengthy explanation that you wrote that probably doesn't actually convey what you are trying to explain. If any of you do chemistry, you know how complicated the process of electrolysis and electroplating is. Imagine having to explain that written down in your IA. No, don't do that. 
Uh, what I did for my chemistry is I just popped up a diagram and then talked about the process of electroblading with this diagram. So much better, I swear. But you don't want to just place that diagram there and let it speak for yourself. What you want to do is put that diagram there and then use that in your writing to explain the concept that you're trying to convey. Just showing the diagram is a bit confusing because the examiner doesn't know exactly what to look at. Showing the diagram and explaining it is what you really want to do. Don't just put it there so that it makes your eye look good because if it's there and no one knows what it's doing there, then it just looks weird. Tip number four, don't be afraid to quote sources rather than try and put complicated concepts in your own words. I feel like teachers have installed this fear into us kids uh, that you should never copyright and you should write absolutely everything in your own words, which in general is a good thing. But because of that, I feel like a lot of us feel like we need to rephrase absolutely everything into our own words, which is honestly just not necessary. Whilst it's good to not uh, straight out copyright things, it's actually really good to quote sources and put them in italics marks and reference them. It can look good because it can show the reader that you've done research. For example, my physics IA, I implement a really confusing concept that would be incredibly difficult for me to explain. So rather than explain it, I just took a whole paragraph which explained it beautifully and just put that into my IA and that was fine. And that's a lot better than me trying to articulate this really difficult scientific concept. That way it looks like I've done my research and it also helps easily convey the concept to the examiner so that he doesn't get confused for the rest of my IA. And tip number five, outline all of the derivations that you're going to do, write out and explain all your chemical reactions that are happening in your experiment, and define all key terms. Don't just quote the equation, uh, do the derivation because that shows your understanding. Also in the background information you want to define all of your key variables and you want to stick to those definitions. So if you're going to use the variable m which you want to represent mass, define that in your background information and then make sure throughout your IA you are consistently using m as mass. If there are any key scientific terms that you're going to be using in your IA, you want to define them. Put in a good old definition. In my math IA that was fractal dimension. In chemistry that was electrolysis and electroplating. And finally, for tip number six. Now, yes, I know that I said there were going to be five tips, but, you know, I wrote this script last night and I was probably a bit tired. I didn't do my math right. So just bear with me here and uh, appreciate the extra tip. So tip number six is explain why you chose your method. So at some point before you do your method, uh, this doesn't have to be directly in the background information, this could be perhaps in like the introduction, but it at least has to be right before your method. What a really good thing to do is that you explain why you chose the method that you did. Lots of people, you know, that are doing a simulation IA, they would just do the simulation IA and just be like, okay, cool, this is the simulation IA I'm going to do. What's really helpful is that you explain why you chose the specific simulation IA that you did. Why did you chose this simulation IA over that simulation IA? So for chemistry, right, I did zinc electroplating, and one of the first comments I got back from IA was, oh, uh, it doesn't really make sense why you chose zinc. It seems a bit arbitrary. You need to explain, one, why zinc works as electroplating, and two, why you chose zinc. If there's some like material that you're using that could be any other material, then you should explain that. But if it's like, I don't know, in biology, you're investigating flowers and you just pick a random flower, then explain why you picked that flower. Don't just pick that random flower. Like explain why you picked chrysanthemums over lilies, you know what I mean? If you're doing a simulation IA in physics, talk about why you picked the simulations that you did. Don't just uh, introduce the simulation without any explanation. You want to say like, oh, I looked at various simulations and I was looking for these particular features in the simulation, mention the features, and I found that this simulation had the best features that I wanted for my IA. So for example, if you're doing a simulation, don't just do the simulation. Explain why you picked that simulation. So like, I looked at various simulations, there were these features that I wanted, and I picked this simulation over that simulation because despite that simulation, simulation having these good features, um, the other simulation had these really good features which were more beneficial and more about what I was looking for for my IA. You don't have to write super deep explanations about the psychology about why you pick the simulation and how it has some deep intrinsic like tie with like your self-worth or something like that. You don't have to go that far, just like, you know, give a bit of context as to why you picked the simulation. This can be in just a few sentences, it doesn't have to be that long, but it's good because it gives your IA justification and reason and gets you personal engagement points and it makes it look like you chose to do something for a reason rather than to do it randomly out of the blue. Like the reason why I picked zinc for my chemistry electroplating was honestly yeah, just because it was like the only metal I had in the lab and I just picked it. And the guy uh, who was marking my IA immediately noticed that. By the guy I don't mean the examiner, I just mean like some like dude that I got to check my chemistry IA. Yeah, and the guy noticed it. He was like, you picked this thing because that was the only thing left in your laboratory. 
story, right? And I was like, uh, yeah, kind of. He was like, you just gotta add something that makes it seem like you pick a thing for a reason. And I did that, so yeah. And that's all I have for you guys today. I hope that helped any of you. Message me in the comments, send me a DM if you have any questions. And yeah, that's it for this video. And good luck on your IA.